everyone, thank you for tuning into my video. Today we'll be testing a fuel gauge out of a 1972 Chevrolet Chevelle Super Sport. Uh, this process will be the same for a 1970, 71, or 72 Chevelle or Monte Carlo. And I'm sure this procedure will apply to a ton of other applications as well. Uh, so let's get testing. Okay, the tools required for testing this fuel gauge are pretty simple. All you will need is a 12 volt power supply to simulate your car's battery. And since the gauge that we're testing uses a 90 ohm sending unit in the fuel tank, we'll need uh, a 90 ohm resistor. 100 ohms is the closest I had. That'll work. And to test half a tank, half of 90 is 45. And the closest I can get is 47 ohms. And uh, with these two, we'll be able to test full tank and half a tank. Okay, let's get testing. Um, as you can see on the back of this uh, gauge, there are three prongs. The bottom one is your ground, the right one is your 12 volt positive, and the one on the left is the resistance from your fuel tank, the sending unit. <laughs> Pretty simple. I will put a diagram of this up on the screen so you could follow along with what I'm doing and see it a little easier on camera here. So what I'm going to do first is get my 100 ohm resistor. This will test full tank. As you can see it's empty right now and I'm going to wrap the lead of the resistor kind of in a U shape and wrap it first around the uh, negative prong here, ground prong I should say, and I'm going to wrap the other end of the resistor around the prong for the resistance value from the fuel tank, just like that. So just from the ground to the resistance side. After that, I'll take the leads from my 12 volt power supply. I'll put the black on the ground. I'll put the red 12 volt positive, and that's it. All right, now with our leads hooked up, we are ready to apply power to the gauge and see if the needle moves to the full mark. Since it's a 100 ohm resistor and the gauge uses 90, it'll go a little bit above the full mark. So we'll see what happens here. Flip on the power supply. There we go, we can immediately see it start to move. There we go, still climbing. That's good, keep going. And it should rest somewhere above the full mark. Looks like it's still going slowly. Just about right there. So that's good. So we know full tank works. Gauge goes all the way from empty to full. Cut. Okay, I have set this up again with the 47 ohm resistor to simulate half a tank. And uh, same procedure, just wrap it around the negative and the resistance pole on the back of the back of the gauge, hook up your power supply, and let's see what happens. You can see it start to climb. It should rest about slightly above half a tank since half of 90 ohms would be 45, and this is a 47 ohm resistor. Let me see, it looks like it's just a scotch above half a tank, which is good. I'd say this gauge is working, it's pretty accurate and it's ready to be put in the service. So as you can see, this testing procedure is pretty simple. Uh, all you need is a power supply. You can even use your car battery and two resistors, which you can get off Amazon, eBay, any electronics store can carry them for very, very cheap. And uh, you just get that peace of mind knowing that your fuel gauge will work before you put it in the car. So you don't have to rip it out again and go through all that work to Test to replace it once it's in the car. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. And thank you for watching.